Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called... Sheeple, the best game in the universe. It's by A. Smith Games, and it is for four to eight players, ages eight and up. In the game Sheeple, it's going to be a party game in which players are all going to be playing by themselves, but they have to think alike. Because in the game, you're going to be writing down on a piece of paper based on the different topics that will be presented throughout the game. Each player, in turn order, is going to select a card, select a topic, and then they will be given a certain amount of time to flip this timer over and start writing down whatever comes to mind with that topic. After the timer is up, players are then going to go ahead and compare answers. They want to get the same pairing of answers with another player, but not too many players. And they also don't want nobody to get their answer. It's a game similar to the game Hive Mind by Richard Garfield, and it has a unique aspect because it also has a board. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. Here's what you get in the game Sheeple. We have, of course, a box and rules, as well as a board play mat, which has all of these different locations that your sheep will be going through, uh, starting in elementary school, elementary school, and going all the way to university. Uh, here we have the different characters you can choose from. There's lots of funny sheep type characters, very cute art, as well as blue cards, which you'll be picking up as you land on blue spaces. They'll have certain ac uh, action items uh, moving forward or backwards. You also have a timer for the timed component of thinking up words that go with the different categories. One person each turn will be choosing, picking up these category cards to choose the category. So a player's turn is pretty simple. You're going to select somebody to get to go first. And the game works simultaneously, so all players are going to play together. However, the first player will go ahead and choose a card, and then there's going to be some topics on the card. They'll pick that card, and the only other thing that's important about players is that after they've gone ahead and picked the card and the topic, they're also going to get to move their character along the board based on scoring, and everybody else will in turn order. So let's go ahead and talk about the turn cards and how they function. So the cards will have different topics on them, like this one has dog breeds and things found in a pirate ship, as well as this more difficult red one down here, parts of a house. Those are less kid-friendly so, topics, yes, so if you more wanna, complicated. If you want to stay family-friendly, you should use the top two. If you want a little more difficulty, you could choose to choose the third. So the person whose turn it is, they're going to choose the category on the card and everyone else is going to be writing down uh, in the allotted time as many words they can think or phrases they can think of that matches this. And you can go ahead and be more complex or you can be simplistic. You can the, be general or specific. And the words don't have to actually match the category. Mm -hmm. If you say if she if the, if the category is guns and we both write bang that's going to work. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Or bullets or something. Yeah. So, uh after the minute is up, everyone's going to tally up their score by going through the words and seeing how many match other people. Now you get points based on how many people you match. So if just two people have a matching word, you each get two points. You just mark it down for yourself. And then if multiple people, meaning everyone's thinking alike, you only get one point. If no one else uh, thought wrote down the word that you wrote down, that's zero points. So you add up all of your points. Everyone's doing this simultaneously. And the score is for each and every word. Yes. So each word is either worth two, one, or zero points. Simultaneously, you're going to add up all the points in the mm -hmm. game or on your sheet of paper for that topic and then move around the board in turn order. Yep. And then after that, you're going to see where you land. And when you land, uh, there's either going to be one's car the spaces that say move forward or backward, or there's mm -hmm. also these guys here. These cards will, uh, when you see the symbol on the board, you'll prompt you to draw one of these. And it'll have specific things. Wool in one, like a hole, hole in one. Forward five. There's a lot of little jokes like that. Or uh, forward six. There's a couple that go back. They basically back do the three. same thing as what the boards does. Yeah. It's just they're going to be more randomized on the uh, board. On the board, it's going to directly move you to a blank space. These could take you anywhere on the yep. board, though. And then after that, you're just going to go and turn order again, uh, playing until somebody reaches the university, right? Yeah. And whoever has gotten the farthest on that track on that turn is going to be the winner. 
So let's go ahead and get into one turn of the game to show you how it works. So we've got our characters on the board and our timer is about ready to go. I'll go ahead and start as the first player and just go ahead and pick a card off the top of the deck here. And what do we got here? Now only I would get to see these car the cards specifically in the topics, so I would be the one who gets to choose one of the topics here. But there's two kid-friendly topics, there's sports mascots and there's birds. And then you have mixed beverages, which is a little less kid-friendly. <laughs> I think we will go with sports mascots. So once I've gone ahead and picked that specific title, that specific category, I'm going to go ahead and put this down, and then the player next to me will go ahead and flip the timer, and we're all going to go, including our cameraman, and we're going to write down all of our answers. You guys ready? Go! Go! And time! Okay, so now we can go ahead and begin our scoring. We've also got our cameraman who did it as well, so we have three players for the game. The more players, the better mm -hmm. though, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start by just going out and listing all the words I wrote down. It doesn't matter if it's if it's more specific or just in general, you could do either one you want, but you're going to score either one, two, or zero points. Your objective is to get pairs of words with another player though, and for nobody else to. Mm -hmm. So the first one is going to be bird. Did anybody get bird? Nope. Okay, so that's nothing for me. How about a toucan? Nope. Nope. How about a bear? I got bears. Okay, I think that's close enough. Just us. So we'd circle that. Just us. Sorry, no cameraman. Uh, <laughs> eagle or eagles? Uh, the cameraman got eagles. All right, so I get two more points for that. How about a griffin or griffins? No. No? How about a tiger? <laughs> I got tiger. Just us two. Okay. I got tiger. How about a lion or lions? I got a lion. No lion. Okay. Okay. How about a fish? No. Wolves or wolf. And, uh, and I wrote both too, just oh, in case. Oh, cameraman got yeah. <laughs> How about snakes? No. How about cobras? No. no. Okay. So, <laughs> Callie, what about you? Uh, so I also put ant eater. Nope. Neither of us. Nobody. Uh, Black hawk. Nope. Poet. My alumni sports mascot. Nope. <laughs> she, tried to, she tried to do a sneaky one on me so I'd remember. And then you got Seahawk, Seahawk Bobcats, and, Bobcats and Bison. Bison. Nope. Nothing. Because Grant was being the last person when she's going to mark off all the ones he didn't get. The easiest way for us to do it is we circle yeah. the two pointers and we put a star next to the one pointers. And uh, so he is going to cross off Beavers, Pirates, and Cowboys. Cowboys. And so now we've gone ahead and got our points. We're going to go score them all up and then I'll show you how it works down below on the board. All right, so now we're going to show you the layout of the board here. And we've got our cards, which would normally be off of the board, as well as our category cards, which are off the board as well. We have our points here for all the players so you can see how it works. And everybody has chosen a character. I'm going to be the sergeant over here. He's going to be the university professor. And then, of course, Callie is going to be the rock star. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and move my character first. I got 10 points because I got five uh, matching uh, letters or matching categories with everybody else. But unfortunately, none of us actually got... Um, all three of us got yeah. anything, so uh -huh. I guess that's just kind of how we eat. So, all right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so you're going to pick up a blue sheep card, and it says, uh, wool in one, forward five. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then the next player is going to be Grant here, and he got how many points? Four he points? Four. One, two, three, and four. Oh, he also gets to draw one, and it says, be heard. Forward six. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. He hits another one. Oh, okay. One more. Listen to a stranger ramble on. Move back, back three. three. Oh. And he gets to draw another one. And okay. this is a good way to explain how a turn like can work. Yeah. Abducted by the mother sheep. Back four. Oh. oh. <laughs> Okay, so, that's it. Okay, that's it. That's it for you. All right, so now it's going to be you, and you got six, six points. points. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And, that's it. and so that is going to end a turn. After that, you're going to take your your uh, cards here, your paper, and you're going to turn them around, and get ready for the next category, move them off the board. And then since I had finished the last category, it'd be Callie's turn. And if you were to pick one, which one would it be? You got medieval weapons, breakfast items, and then romantic things. Ooh. I might go romantic. Thing. Okay, and then we go ahead and start the game again. <laughs> now, after that is done, then each player is going to move around the board again. Now, this board is just going to go around like this, and everybody's going to keep going across the board until they get to the finish line. And on the round that people start hitting the finish line, there is this extra track here, and it tells you how far you got ahead. So, compete in the Lambo, on the O Lambo Olympics, or whatever, or become a grass. Turn not. So maybe this person got here, 
maybe um, this person got here and I ended up getting here. So both of these players made it past the university, but this person got farther along on the track on mm -hmm. this specific round, so that would be the winner of the game, Sheeple, the best game in the universe. I'm going to talk about it. All right, so let's go ahead and review the game now. And I've got some categories. We've got theme, gameplay, art, creativity, and replayability. That's very important in party games like these. And she's got some yeah. extra points to give us. But first one is theme. What do you think about the theme of Sheeple, the best game in the universe? Uh, well, the theme, the sheep, actually really works with the, uh, the whole concept of the game trying well, the to gameplay get is about adding the how people were how work people together, think the... alike mm -hmm. and uh trying to get someone at least one person to just think like you <laughs> because you don't want to be the only person on the outside no. you want everybody mm -hmm. to think alike and so you're all sheep right and it makes sense too because you're going to university you're trying to make everybody think alike in this sheep topia world yes. <laughs> and so the thing does come through uh is it cheesy yes, yes. it's super cheesy <laughs> and super punny and like, mm -hmm. you're either gonna think it's hilarious or just be like, it's oh. gonna be so cringy. But either way, it's a good time as far as the theme works. It does integrate into the game really well. And the categories mm -hmm. are nice and simplistic. And it has that additional, like, hidden, or not hidden, but like, uh, more difficult or like. Kind of a more difficult level. So if you do wanna make it a little more challenging, a little more specific. So, but yeah. it's very accessible, I think, for even kids, uh, the whole family to play. Yeah, and the theme also makes it very accessible yes, as well. Yes, the theme makes it And fun. then, so gameplay, right? The gameplay is basically a party game. It reminds me of the game Hive Mind, mm -hmm. which by Richard, Richard Garfield, which is played similarly. But in fact, I actually like this style of game better because it's quicker. In Hive Mind, you can go you can go forward down the track, backwards. Yeah. And, that, oh, and then backwards. you have to, like, once you get to a certain point, you have to stop and then like break the barrier so everybody else has a chance to catch up. It works, but it's just lengthy. And this one is a lot quicker. It feels a lot faster. You feel like you're able to write down all the, all the categories are just easy enough to it's, where you can just mindlessly write stuff down. Especially if you're adults, then you're gonna be writing down a lot more, a lot of words and you'll be moving fairly uh, quickly across the You can board. get a ton of points in yeah. this game. Any more from like- I got 18 points one around. Yeah, I think that's even crazy. more, I think like 15 or 12. Yeah. It just depends, but and when the more players, the more points is gonna come. And then there's also yeah. gonna be more more likely we're not going to have unique words but um yeah so it's very interesting it's mm -hmm. how, how you want to actually even with the gameplay itself you can think about who might think of specific words so you can actually play against your uh friends and family yeah but you can also <laughs> be like okay so i know this person's math mascot, mascot is the poet so i'm going to specifically target her so we both get two points on a word that i would normally get one or even no points mm -hmm. and you'd be surprised which words you write down and then players don't actually write yeah they're you know? just not thinking of them because you only have a minute to think about it so so, You're gonna miss some obvious ones. What about art? Art in the <laughs> game. It's it's very vibrant. Yeah, thing, right? it's got that. It's a cartoon style, obviously theme integrated well. Uh, the sh sheeple are kind of people. <laughs> I mean, as far as like, is it a hardcore gamer art artistic thing? Not really. It's more of like a kid thing. This is yeah. one of those. Where I would see this game in Target easily in like the game. Yeah. That's the first thing that came to mind. Like this really would work as like a party game from in Target. Like mm -hmm. I could see this on a store shelf, which I guess is a huge compliment. But also it's <laughs> it, it's detraction that wouldn't be likely to be at like a game shop is is more so as it would at like yeah. a, a Target or a big retail store. So that's kind of what I felt for that one. And the art kind of shines like that too because it works in the kids' aisle, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, creatively, uh, this creatively creativity, <laughs> it, it works great. I, I think it's fun. I think it's engaging. I think it's really quick. And it's an, it's one of those games that you can play fairly quickly mm -hmm. and be in and out as a gateway game. I mean, uh, yeah, I think there's opportunity for the players to be creative with how you want to use the categories as well. Oh yeah, so definitely. It, 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 yeah, Some players are going to be very like vague on their you know like planets. Uh, if it's like type of type of like, you know, you, like what's things, in, what's in the space? In outer space. Yeah, some people might write just all the planets, or other people might go so so far where they start start saying quasars and, and quantum like atoms and, and, and yeah. Like, Great, yeah. So you can go that far, and that's interesting as well. I like that. And far as replayability, I mean, <laughs> we played maybe four topics in the game our first game, yeah. and there is, I'm guessing, like over a hundred cards in here There's with three topics cards. each. Mm -hmm. So you're not gonna run out of gameplay in this game. And yeah. even if you did come across the same topic, it doesn't matter as long as you're playing with different players. Yeah, and you're probably so, gonna be playing with different people. So this game so, is going to yeah. last a lifetime. Mm -hmm. You, I would not assume you could, you would need another game like this. Um, so as far, what do you think personally about uh, this one compared to Hive Mind? Because the only one I could think of that kind of came to mind that, is similar, similar to it. Similar. Um, 
Yeah, I like the movement aspects of this one better, even yeah. with like oh, going it's so kitty. Yeah, it's, it's just like it's whatever. Like just easier and and not so much like struggle as Hive was, <laughs> and like trying to to be at Hive mind felt a little more competitive. Yeah, maybe? yeah, yeah. I I think so. Um, so it's between those two, right? And Hive mind's mm -hmm. also more well not well produced, but like a more fully structured produced yeah. game game. Yeah. Uh, this one's just like, you got lambs, they go across to the university. Let's have fun. Works. <laughs> so overall, though, I think this game, for kids, which is, a, I never give this out usually, but it's like a 10 out of 10. This is a full-on supporting game for kids. Mm -hmm. I really think it works well. And it's a game I could easily play again over and over and over again because it's, it's always going to be fun with, no matter who you play with. It's, it's just a good, light filler game. You could play in between other games or just to get the party going <laughs> but like if i was gonna bring this out to my dudes or to my mm -hmm. you know like gamer hardcore night or even to like uh, the gal night with callie and all of her gal friends this may be one of those we pop in once in a while yeah it's, it's gonna be one of those things where it's we're gonna have to be in the a mood for game. it yeah, especially if party. you're over the age of a certain you know like maybe 30 35 that's where it's gonna be like we'll use it for parties or like with family gatherings family. so mm -hmm. but it's still a good game so either way, I think you guys will have a lot of uh, decision making to make here, depending mm -hmm. on uh, if you're interested back in this game. But for us, uh, as far as party games go, as far as family games go, I think this is a definite pickup. Uh, anything else to say about it? No. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go mm -hmm. ahead and get to the end. Hi right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go ahead and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. We do greatly appreciate it. As well as checking out the game we just reviewed. Sheeple, the best game in the universe. <laughs> and doing on checking out our sponsors. Uh, everything Board Game, The Giveaway Geek, and Ferdinand the Cardboard Stacker. And if you'd like to, you can visit our website, unfiltredgamer.com. We've got the blog post giveaways, Kickstarter list, and more. We're currently giving away two games right now, The Gate of Verlay and Kingdoms of Burden, the Kingmaker game. <laughs> you gotta check those eyes out. All right, guys, well, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, we look forward to... Seeing you next time. time.